So I got to give Becky Lynch credit for wrestling sick. Um, it was a very great match with her and Rhea Ripley. They tore the house down. Rhea got a very, uh, you know, a badass WrestleMania entrance. Um, she had her favorite band play her, her theme music, her entrance, right? Um, I knew Rhea was going to retain going into this match. There's no one believable right now that can beat Rhea Ripley for that Women's World Championship. Not even Becky Lynch. But um, I don't know if they run this match back or not. But um, I think it's safe to say that we're going to move on from this feud. If Rhea Ripley just beat Becky straight out, clean, she had a reptide, you know, on the turnbuckle, you know, onto Be Becky Lynch, hit the riptide, you know, kind of threw her to the turnbuckle, right? And then hit it, hit the riptide on the mat for the one, two, three. And, you know, Rhea retains. So, I think they move on ultimately. And my question is, who's going to challenge Rhea Ripley next? We don't know that for sure, right? But um, if I had to grade this match, I give it, I give it a, I give it a three point five out of five. That was pretty good. Um, if they were to have another match, would they be able to top, top their WrestleMania match? I don't, I'm not sure on that one, but um. Yeah, I thought overall it was a really good match. It's a good way to open up WrestleMania. And the question is, where, where does that leave Becky Lynch? So the next match, we got the six-pack challenge ladder match, the six-pack tag team ladder match. Undisputed tag team titles. You have the Raw tag belts and the SmackDown tag belts hanging above. And basically, basically, uh, whatever team grabs the Raw belts, they are the tag champs of the Raw brand. And whoever grabbed the SmackDown tag belts, you know, they're the tag team championship, tag team champions of the SmackDown brand. So to keep things short, um, Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, they grab the SmackDown tag team championships. And so, they'll be defending those belts on SmackDown only, okay? And R-Truth and Miz will go on to win the Raw Tag Belts. Awesome Truth. And it was cool to, it was cool to see R-Truth get his WrestleMania moment. Finally, after all these years. The guy has never had a, a true Mania moment. And I thought it was long overdue. For him to get that to get that moment, right? So, and I thought it was a fun match. Uh, you had a lot of uh, you know crazy spots. You know, you had you know that was a uh, more like a match to get people riled up, excited, entertained, and whatnot. Um, you know, when it comes to WrestleMania, you, you always have to have a ladder match. I feel like it's tradition at this point to have a ladder match at WrestleMania. And so, it's smart at this point to separate the tag team championships, right? To have two tag team belts. Um, personally, I would, you know, going forward, I would change the design, for the Raw Tag Belts and the SmackDown Tag Belts. I would change the design. I'm not I'm not feeling the current red and blue design anymore. Like, you know, that copper, like, warrior design, design belt just ain't cutting it no more. So they got to change it. And I think it's time to uh, switch up the design. And you have enough tag teams now to where you know you can have separate tag team championships across from both brands you know as opposed to having the undisputed tag team titles 
you know, there's very limited opportunity for, you know, other tag teams, right? If Judgment Day are the undisputed tag team champions, champions, they're not going to go on SmackDown very often, right? You've got like four or five teams on SmackDown, and they're and they have no belt, they have no tag belts to fight for, okay? And they're just primarily on Raw, so it was smart to separate both those tag belts. Because now the tag team division from both brands are, you know, there's more depth, right, between the two tag team divisions on Raw and SmackDown. You got more teams on SmackDown, you got more teams on Raw, so we can get rid of the whole undisputed, you know, tag team concept. No more of that. That's not going to really work, so... I'm glad they uh, they scratched that. I mean, originally that was Vince McMahon's call. Now that we're in the Paul Levesque era, you know, we're doing things a little bit different. You know, we're, do, we're, we're going back to how it was before. Two tag belts across from both brands, right? And those tag belts can feel just as important because if you're just... Because if you build up your Raw tag division and build up your SmackDown tag division accordingly, then, you know, it's going to be taken seriously. So, yeah, overall, it was a decent ladder match. No complaints. And next we have the Usos, okay? Brother versus brother. Jay versus Jimmy. Yeet versus no yeet now I loved the video package between the Usos highlighting their journey highlighting their their life together as twins their upbringing you know their their historic reigning like their, their historic long reign as tag team champions um, I felt that video package really highlighted a, a lot of uh, key moments when it comes to the Usos and really showing, you know, that, listen, they're twins. They know each other inside and out. They know each other's thoughts. They know what the other is thinking. They know what move the other one is going to make at any moment. You know, they're kind of standing side by side, like, you know, their backs being turned from one another. I thought that was a pretty uh, uh, cool image right there, cool visual. But when we get to the match, the match itself uh, really did not impress me, if I'm being honest. I thought the super kicks, the spam of the super kicks was very unnecessary. And it was not needed in this match. I felt that um, Jay, Jay and Jimmy can wrestle a better match. And Rikishi, their dad, that's something that they would want for them to do is wrestle an actual match. Um, just spamming the super kicks, it, it kind of killed the match, right? There was storytelling, which is good, right? That's something I expected. I'm glad there was a, they were telling a story. Jimmy begging Jay not to beat him up, you know, like, please, I'm sorry, forgive me, I, you know, I, I, I just want things to be back to normal, you know, you know, just begging his uh, twin brother for forgiveness, and Jay, you know, Jay fought for the okie doke, and Jimmy hit him a super kick, Hit the top rope splash, and you thought that was it for, for Jay. But no, Jay kicked out. You know, Jay hit a spear on Jimmy, then hit the superfly splash for the three count and the win. And it's very obvious between Jay and Jimmy who is the most over. It's Jay. Jay has the brighter future. Jay has the most to gain 
when it comes to his singles run. Jimmy is just losing. He's losing nonstop. He doesn't win anything. Um, anytime there's a brawl, he's always getting taken out. Always. So Jimmy's the weak link when it comes to the bloodline. I think the best route for Jimmy Uso is to team up with Solo and become the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, right? That would be a good way to kind of give Jimmy a rebound for the bad booking of his character these past few months. Because let me, let, let's be honest, Jimmy has had it rough ever since the Usos broke up. You know, Jimmy has had it really hard, you know, and it's going to take some time to recover his character, but he's pretty much dead in the water at this point, right? So out of all the matches, this was the worst match of the night from a technicality standpoint. Uh, from a storyline perspective, it was good, right? I mean, there was nothing inherently wrong with the match. Um, the match itself, I could could have been better. I, I, I just know that they could work um, a more tactical match. Like, they have it in them to do that. You know, like, they can go out there and really throw down. You know, we've seen Jay had... We, see, we, we have seen Jay have you know, very good matches, stellar matches, right, with other people, but, um, I give this match, um, you know, a two out of five, just to be generous, only because, you know, Jay is so damn over, and the crowd is for him at this point, man, he's just so damn over, it's unbelievable. So next we have, I believe, Sami Zayn and Gunther, the mm -hmm. Reign Ganarol, for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, when this match was first announced, or when Sami Zayn won that gauntlet, a part of me was rejecting this whole match. Because I believe that this was Chad Gable's match. This was his feud. Chad just had the stronger story when it came to Gunther, right? Chad facing Gunther um, was more convincing. Chad is a bigger underdog than Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn at least got to main event WrestleMania, won the undisputed tag team titles with Kevin Owens. Chad Gable has never won a WrestleMania. He's never had a singles match at WrestleMania. Gunther made his daughter cry when he beat him back in September. So there is a history. There's a an existing story with Chad Gable and Gunther. And you look at Chad's wrestling ability, um, his style, what uh, Gunther's style, they just clash so well, right? Chad is a genuine is a genuine underdog, but so is Sami Zayn. And I thought Sami Zayn told an incredible story throughout the match, um, channeling in his inner Rocky and showing that fighting spirit throughout the the match, the later parts of the match. Um, that top rope brain buster was just a thing of beauty. I never thought that Sami would ever do that uh, do that move, but hey. This is a Triple H's, you know, he's in charge now. So he's going to allow his wrestlers to do more in the ring. Let them show out more. And Sami Zayn got to pull out that devastating top rope brain buster. And once he hit that, it's like, wow, that was enough to put away Gunther. Or it was a perfect setup, right? Because it didn't, it didn't win Sammy the match, just to be clear. But it was a great setup for the Huluva kick on Gunther, and then Sammy gets the three count. And, I'm, and I was shocked. I wasn't expecting Sammy to pull out the victory. 
I was expecting to go through the retain. Um, you know, or Chad Gable costing Sami Zayn the match and the title. Um, I loved that Sami's wife was at ringside going through, got to actually be a villain for once and, you know, be a, a prick and verbally uh, insult, you know, verbally go after Sammy's wife, you know, and once Gunther hit all those power bombs on Sammy, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is going to be a squash, right, that's it, like after the third power bomb, that's it for Sammy Zayn, no, he kicked out, you know, so there's just a lot of um, drama in the later parts of this match, and I thought these two worked very well together. Um, me personally, Chad Gable and Gunther would have had a better match than Sammy and Gunther. And the story would have been very powerful with Chad and Gunther. But it is what it is. Um, you know, shout out to Gunther for a fantastic run as Intercontinental Champion for over 600 days. Um, you know, he will go down as the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. No question about it. Um, I give this match a 4 out of 5. It was very good. Uh, moving on to, I believe, the 6th woman tag team match. Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, Naomi versus Damage Control, Asuka, Kyrie, and Dakota. Really love the entrance, man. With uh, Jay Bianca and Naomi. Um, that was a kick-ass entrance. Um, I thought Jade looked very good in her in her wrestling debut. Well, not wrestling debut, but uh, her debut match in the in the WWE. Um, this was more a showcase for Jade to show her how good she is. And she delivered, man. It's not just her wrestling ability. It's really her look. That's going to get her over. She has a very distinctive look. Um, she's, super, she's a superstar. There's no there's no doubt about it. She can definitely be your next China. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can see her in the future. You know, being the one that, you know, beats Rhea Ripley. You know, for the Women's World Championship. You know, I can see her win, winning the Rumble next year. I think they're just going to push her to the moon. And they're going to go all the way with uh, Jay Cargo. Uh, the match itself, for me, was uh, nothing too special. It was, you know, it was okay. Um, it lacked some energy, I'm not going to lie. But Bianca Belair was always good. It was good as usual, you know. Um, Naomi looked good. Uh, man, every time Naomi wrestles, she's always uh, doing something new in, in 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 the match. You know, she's always finding new ways to be innovative and creative. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that about Naomi. You know, she's always doing something new. And uh, if I had to rate this match, I would give it a two point five out of five. Um. The match was okay, nothing special. It was really just a showcase for Jay Cargo, and that's all it was. So next we have, I know I'm missing a match. So I, I'm, I'm impulsed to get to the main event, the tag team main event, but I know there's a, another match that I'm probably missing. Oh yeah, the Ray and Ray Mysterio and Andrade versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. Um, almost forgot about that tag match. Um, it was okay. It wasn't the it wasn't the best performance by Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio has had better WrestleMania matches. I thought personally this was probably his, one of his weaker WrestleMania matches. Because I've seen Ray's mania matches. Okay, you look at one he had with Eddie Guerrero, Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, you know, 
the one he had with, um, I'm trying to think, with, you know, with, with his son Dom last year. That was really good. But uh, this one, it was okay for what it was. Decent action, luchador action. I thought Andrade looked pretty good. Uh, you know, Dom has some, continues to have the most heat out of everyone. I don't understand why he lost. I did not like the fact that Dom lost this match. I thought he should have won. Um, Ray won last year. Why couldn't Dom win this match? I have no idea. But they had uh, a couple of uh, former Eagles, uh, Eagles football players interfere. And they pretty much cost Santos and Dom the match, right? Former uh, linebackers and the Eagles. And I was like, man, who the hell are these guys? You know? So I, I didn't like the fact that Dom lost again. Dom continues to lose. I, I don't get it. Even though Santos was the one that got pinned, I, I really wanted Dom to win this match. But it, it, is, it is what it is. I give this a, a 3 out of 5. And now we go into our main event, right? The, the biggest tag team match of all time. The main event that we've been that we've been waiting for, to be honest. Like that's the main selling point of WrestleMania 40 was that tag team match: The Rock, the Final Boss, and the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Okay, if Rock and Roman win, then. The main event of night two would be Bloodline Rules. Okay? Now, <clears throat> going into this tag match, I knew that the pacing was going to be very slow. Why? Because The Rock is not conditioned to wrestle a fast-paced match anymore. His body's not going to be able to withhold, right, um, a, a lot of punishment or you know, just wrestling at a fast, a faster pace. For his conditioning, he had to slow it down, right? The guy's 51 years old. Um, Roman, as you noticed, had to do most of the heavy lifting in this main event. You know, and credit to Roman, you know, man looked a little burnt out at times. I mean, dude. His hair was looking a little wild out there, looking a little crazy, you know. Roman Reigns was out, was out here looking like uh, Ichi, Ichi Bomb from uh, Yakuza, like the dragon. You know, for anyone that's played that game and the main character, you know what I'm talking about. Dude had that crazy, fuzzy hair going on, man. You know, I think he forgot to wet his hair or something. I don't know. But, um,. It started to really pick up later, you know, later in the match. I think the match was like about an hour, if you include the entrances. But man, that rock entrance was was badass. I'm not gonna lie. That was perhaps the rock's greatest entrance of all time. The final boss. Um it was really good. All of his, out of all his entrances, this was the best one yet. And he came out with his Brahma Bowl title, which I thought that was a nice little touch. Um, but for what The Rock did in this match was was uh, you know, he looked good for the most part. You know, he didn't look too blown up out there. He looked he looked like he leaned out. Since uh, since January, he didn't look too bad out there. I gotta give him credit. Um, I thought he was gonna blow blow up, but there's a reason why he did the less in he did less in the match. He's not a workhorse like Rollins, Rhodes, and Roman when he wants to be. But The Rock played his position well in this match. He knew what he was doing. He knew his role. He knew that he had to create drama in the match. He was responsible for that. You know, instructing the referee to not count him out. If you count me out, you're you're fired. You're going to lose your job. Don't you fuck with me. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it pretty much became 
a no disqualification match because the referee ain't going to count out the rock. So they they all fight out outside the arena, you know, um, outside the arena. Um, I meant, you know, in the crowd, right? They were fighting outside the crowd, um, you know, from an action standpoint, you know, there wasn't really much anything that I can remember. I'll have to go back and watch the match because there was times where I was kind of dozing off, you know, just kind of waiting for them to get to the the climax, get to the to the part of the match that that's going to actually get me interested, right? So Cody goes to hit Roman with a uh, his top rope springboard uh, cutter, the Cody cutter. Right, but from the the top rope position, I think probably miscommunication. He wound up, you know, he he wind up like hitting Roman with his shoulder instead. Right, I don't think I think Roman may may have forgot to feed into the move or wasn't feeding into it right. I don't know. There was just a little miscommunication there. I mean, it, it didn't look bad or anything. It just it didn't really connect how it was supposed to. So, um, yeah, they were, they were just, you know, taking their time. It was very slow paced, you know, old school, how it's supposed to be right. Um, you, you know, if you, if you're expecting an AW like match, uh, you, you can keep on dreaming. That's, that was never going to happen. You know, you have to be out of your damn mind expecting that type of uh, style of of a wrestling match. You know, when you saw Cody and Roman wrestle one on one, there was a a higher temple. You know what I'm saying? There was a um. Hold on for a second. Uh, yeah, there was a higher tempo in their match compared to the tag team match, right? Because The Rock was in there, they had to slow it down. So, you know, overall, it was not a bad match. Um, the outcome was expected. You had to create adversity for Cody, right? As Cody was going to hit that crossroads on Roman, the third one, you know, Rock just whips Cody with the belt, Right, shades of last year's WrestleMania when Solo hit the Samoan spike on Rhodes, right, and that's how Roman got the win. This time around, Roman did not get the win. It was Rock who hit the rock bottom, hit the people's elbow drop, and got the victory. And um, you know, no complaints there. You know, the match accomplished what it was supposed to accomplish. Um, it felt like a war between Rollins and Rhodes versus The Rock and Roman. It, you know, it it did its job for the most part, you know. And it created disappointment, uh, doubt, concern, hopelessness in Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Like, man, Cody's going to be at a disadvantage tomorrow night. There's no way that he can win, right? They're setting the stage, right? But you knew Cody has to win. Because it would not make any sense for Cody to lose two two nights in a row. That would just kill his character, right? And Seth did not take the pin for a reason. Why would you have Seth, your world champion, take the pin when he got to defend his world title against Drew the next night? So, um, yeah, yeah. Overall, it, you know, the match was good. Um, I give it, I give it a, a, a three point five out of five. I thought all four guys worked well together. You know, it was more drama, more, you know, uh, anticipation, urgency than there was like any real good action. You know, it was, you know that you can you can tell they were holding back. They were, you know, being limited on purpose because Seth got to pull out more moves in his match with Drew. Seth was going to pull out all his, you know, all of his great moves in this tag match. Neither was Cody or Roman, 
right? So, night one was not the better night. I will be reviewing night two in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that. But uh, overall, night one was, uh, for me, a 7.5 out of 5. Um, others, others, others will probably go a little bit lower than that, a lower rating. It is what it is. Um, yeah, not a bad night. Um, you know, can't, can't really complain much about night one of WrestleMania. So with that being said, this is the Rational Wrestling Mark. Thank you all for watching, and I'm out. Peace.